Welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English and today we are addressing an interesting topic. Children are scared of monsters and when a child is being naughty or misbehaving, parents tell the child, if you don't listen or you don't be quiet or you don't stop crying, the monster is going to come and get you. And that child absolutely poops themselves, guys. And that child goes to sleep and pretends that there's not a monster. And that child isn't going to wake up all night because they're scared that the monster will come. Now, why do I tell that story? In English, in particular English literature, there is a monster similar to that monster. And the moment you mention his name, students, children, you guys go running. Don't talk about that. Tell me all you want about Shakespeare. Tell me all you want about an inspector called the modern text. Tell me all you want about the 19th century. But for the love of God, do not mention poetry. If you mention poetry, I am going to shut down. I haven't got a clue what's coming up in the exam for poetry. I know I've got an anthology. I know there's 15 poems in the anthology. But what do I do with these 15 poems? How many questions are there after that question? What is unseen poetry? What do I do with unseen poetry? How many unseen poems are there? How many marks is each question? How much time do I spend on each question? Guys, poetry is the hardest part of English literature. I, I, I empathize with you guys. I get it. I used to hate poetry as a student. Why is poetry scoring so low every single year? And why is it that the students in year 11, three, four months out from their exam, but they haven't got a clue what's happening in the poetry element of the exam? Guys, there's a few reasons. Number one, a lot of schools, a lot of teachers, a lot of students, they focus a lot on actually learning the poems. So they'll learn all the power and conflict, or they will learn all the love and relationship poems. But what they forget is the following. Unlike Shakespeare, unlike the modern text, unlike the 19th century text, for those three, there's one question per topic. So there's one question for Macbeth, one question, for example, for Inspector Calls, and one question for Christmas Carol. But the poetry side of the exam is like a whole exam in itself, because for the poetry part of the exam, you've got one comparative question for the scene part, then you've got an unseen poetry question, and then you've got another comparative unseen poetry question. That's three questions when you're used to doing one. So people or students are not taught about each question specifically and what you're supposed to do for each. The second problem why students struggle, guys, when it comes to poetry is because poetry is an exam in itself, I've marked so many exams where students literally ignore unseen poetry. They don't even touch it. They don't even do it. Now, for me, this is two reasons. They run out of time or they don't know what to do with it. That is why it is important to know what you are supposed to actually be doing in the poetry part of the exam. This must stop. I, I take it on my shoulders, guys, that I need to help you guys raise the bar, raise the grades for poetry in this year's exam. And the first thing we're going to do and the first step we're going to take in the right direction is we're going to go over what actually comes up for the poetry part of the exam. What are the questions? How many questions? How many marks? How much time? How many paragraphs? How do you answer them? What do you do for the poetry part of the exam? Hopefully, guys, in this video, we're going to go over all of this once and for all. That way, in the future, when we look at the actual poems in detail, for example, or we go over the unseen po poems, it's not going to be, but well, hold on, am I even doing that? That's not me. I'm not doing unseen poetry, am I? Scene poetry? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm doing power and conflict. That all is going to be settled by the end of this video. All right, guys, I'm going to switch onto the board and we're going to go over the poetry part of the exam in clear and concise detail. When we are looking at the poetry element of our exam, we find that poetry comes up in English literature 
paper two. This is where we find the poetry. And this exam is two hours and 15 minutes. Now, the, what, what comes up in this exam, guys, is the following. This exam has the modern text. Guys, this exam has the modern text, which is text like Inspector Calls. And we spend 45 minutes on this part of the exam. And the other part of the exam is the poetry. Guys, the other part of the exam is the poetry. And on the poetry side of the exam, we have one hour and 30 minutes, which is a long time. You have a very long time on the poetry part of the exam. Now, when it comes to the poetry element, guys, of our exam, the poetry element of the exam is divided into three clear sections, guys. The poetry element of the exam is three clear sections. And let's go through them one by one. The first thing that we are going to be doing in our exam, so the first section when it comes to poetry, guys, is the scene poetry comparison. Guys, it's the scene poetry comparison. And this question is worth 30 marks and it's assessing AO1, 2 and 3. Now for a 30 mark question, guys, in a poetry exam, we are looking to spend 45 minutes. Now in these 45 minutes, guys, we want to spend six minutes planning and we want to spend 13 minutes on three paragraphs. So we are doing three paragraphs and we are spending 13 minutes per paragraph. Now, what do I mean when I say that it is a scene poetry comparison? Guys, this is looking at either power and conflict or it is looking at love and relationships. Now you should all know what you are doing at school. You should all be doing one of these sections for your exam. Now both sections have 15 poems that you must cover. So quick recap guys, it's a scene poetry comparison, 30 marks, 45 minutes, six minutes planning, 13 minutes to do each paragraph and you're looking to do three paragraphs and it's either on power and conflict and love and relationships. But what do you do in your exam? Guys, what do you actually do in your exam when it comes to this question? Now, the first thing that you will do in your exam, guys, is a kind of common sense thing. The first step you will do in your exam is you will read the question. You will read the question just to get an idea of what the, po what the question is asking you for. The second thing you will do, guys, is you will skim the poem. The reason you will skim the poem is because hopefully you've been revising. So you don't need to read the poem line by line all over again. You've been doing it in school for the past two years. You've been revising it at home. If you need to read it line by line, by all means, go ahead. But a skim should be sufficient because you should hopefully have learned your quotes and you should hopefully know what the poem is about. Step number three, guys, is the most important step. Step number three, guys, is when you pick your comparison poem. Guys, step number three is where you pick your comparison poem. That is the most important step of the exam. Now, the reason that that is the most important step of the exam is because if you pick a poem that is really hard to compare to or you pick the wrong poem to compare to, it will ruin your entire exam. So you read the question, you skim the poem, and then you think, okay, this poem, this question, I'm going to compare it to this poem that you've learned off by heart. They're going to give you one poem in the exam. The comparison poem, they expect you to know it in your head, know it in your mind, know it in your brain. They expect you to have learned it off by heart. And then, guys, you begin planning your three paragraphs. You begin planning your three paragraphs. Now, I've made videos about how to compare poems, what paragraph structure to use. I'm not going to go over that here. This video is just to give you a layout of what's coming up in your exam. But the gist of it, guys, when it comes to scene poetry, 
30 marks, AO1, AO2 and AO3, 45 minutes, 6 minutes planning, 3 paragraphs, 13 minutes each. First thing you do in your exam is you read the question. The second thing you do in your exam is you read the poem, you skim the poem. And the third thing you do is you think about what poem you're going to compare it to. And then you plan your three paragraphs and then you spend 13 minutes per paragraph writing out the paragraphs. Then we move on to section number two. And this is the unseen poem. Guys, this is the unseen poetry section. This is not a comparison. This is not a comparison. Now, this section of our exam, guys, it is worth 24 marks. Now, why is it worth 24 and not 30? That is because, guys, this section of our exam is looking at AO1 and AO2. You are not being assessed on AO3 for this part of the exam. Now, for this 24 mark question, you are looking to spend 30 minutes on this section. You are looking, guys, to spend 30 minutes on this section. And out of this time, guys, you want to spend five minutes planning. And you want to spend approximately eight minutes writing three paragraphs. And the structure that I always advise, guys, for this is do three pretzel paragraphs. But by all means, if your school wants to do Peter or Peel, you do whatever they want. But I advise you to do pretzel paragraphs. Now, what do you do in this part of the exam? What, what do you do when you turn to the unseen poem? The first thing that you must understand, guys, that the unseen poem is a complete random poem. Nobody knows, other than the examiners, what this poem is going to be. It is a completely random poem. That's the first thing that I want you all to be aware of. Sometimes, guys, people think that if you're doing power and conflict, that the unseen poetry is going to come from the love section. Guys, it's a completely random poem. Second point, every student in the whole country for AQA does the exact same unseen poem. Doesn't matter whether you did love or power and conflict, when it comes to the unseen poem, every student is doing the exact same unseen poetry question. Now, what do you do when you get to the unseen poetry question? The first thing you do is the same as we did earlier. The first thing we do, guys, is we read the question. Once you've read the question, you know what you got to do. You know that in that poem, you must be able to find three quotes to answer the question. Why three? Because we are doing three paragraphs. So, we do step number two. We read the poem and we plan at the same time. We read the poem, guys, and we plan at the same time. Now, what do I mean when I say that we read the poem and we plan at the same time? A lot of the time, guys, I see students, right, when they're doing the unseen poetry part of the exam. They go absolutely ham. They go crazy. They analyze every single line. They pick out every single language device. They pick out all the structural devices. And they annotate like crazy. What's the point of doing that? You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. When it comes to the unseen poem, guys, you don't have to understand every single line. All you have to do in the unseen poetry part of the exam is understand enough of the poem to write three paragraphs. So while you're reading the poem, let's say the question is, how is, how is, how is, how is friendship presented in the poem? While you're reading the poem, underline three quotes about friendship. In those three quotes, make sure there's a technique, language technique, structural technique, and make sure you, there's something you can zoom into. This could be another device or a word or a phrase. Once you picked your three quotes, you're good to go and you're good to begin your three paragraphs. Don't be sitting there dwelling upon the fact that you have to answer, you have to understand the entire unseen poem. Because after that, after these 30 minutes, you're never going to see that poem ever again. So don't get lost in trying to do so much for this question. Find three quotes that you can use, 
plan your paragraphs and off you go. So guys, that is the first thing you do when it comes to the poetry part of the exam. That is the second thing you do. It's the first unseen poetry question and you get one poem. Guys, right, number three, what is the third poetry part of the exam? This is the unseen poetry comparison. Guys, this part of the exam is the unseen poetry comparison. This question, guys, is worth eight marks. And for an eight mark question, guys, you, you're going you're gonna to have, after all this is said and done, on average, guys, you're going to have about 15 or so minutes. And out of these 15 minutes, guys, spend about five minutes planning and spend about 10 minutes writing. And you are looking to do, guys, one to two paragraphs for this particular question. Now, don't be so specific with time. If you want to add a few minutes from here, there, and kind of stop and change, go for it. But this is, guys, a basic outline of how you go about using the one hour and 30 minutes. Now, what happens in this poem? Guys, what, sorry, sorry, what happens in this question? You've already got one unseen poem because we have one here, right? So we've already got one unseen poem. Now, AQA give you another unseen poem. Guys, now AQA give you another unseen poem. So now you have two unseen poems. You have one from this question and now you've got one from this question. And what you must do, guys, is you must, they will say to you, uh, talk about the similarities or the differences, and they'll give you a topic. They'll give you a topic, guys, to talk about. They'll say either compare how love is presented or compare how something is presented between the two poems. Now, I always say, do one paragraph per unseen poem. Guys, do one paragraph per unseen poem. So one paragraph on this poem, one paragraph on this poem. And in between, you might want to say the word similarly or the word on the other hand, just to kind of show that you are comparing throughout. But essentially, guys, this is what the three sections of the poetry element of the exam look like. Now, this video, guys, is simply for this. Is simply for you to be aware of what's coming up in the poetry part of the exam. How to answer the question in detail. How to, for example, analyze the unseen poem. How to compare the two texts. What paragraph structure do you use for this question? Those are topics that I will address in later videos. And some of that stuff I've already addressed in previous videos. But this first thing is such an important part of the exam. You now know what's coming up for the poetry part of your exam. Begin revising and preparing accordingly. Guys, the boogie monster is hopefully no longer as scary as it was before this video began. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.